So because there are some new people here, we thought we would um, touch on what do you need to do a Christmas light show. And I thought, I set myself a challenge. I thought, can I do an entire presentation just by cutting and pasting stuff from the 101 manual? <laughs> so what you're going to see in the following slides is literally entirely cut and pasted. A lot of, lot of work in Microsoft Paint last night. <laughs> The point is to show that the 101 manual is a good, you know, useful reference that even people that have been in the hobby for a number of years might want to look back at occasionally, especially right now where it's just been through a big, um, you know, a big refresh of content. Um, and the URL is at the end of these slides. So you want to make your house look like one of these, perhaps. Um, you want to throw up a heap of lights. You might want to make them blink and flash and might want to do that in time to music. Um, this is the place to be. So the 101 talks about a series of, of steps, and I can see Ryan cringing at the paintwork already, <laughs> because um, I reordered this 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 chart because I didn't like the way it flowed, because it was going to dictate the rest of the presentation. So I wanted to talk about the things in this order and, and include a section down the bottom sequence playback device that wasn't in this list at all. So you need some lights. There are lots of different types of lights. You know, you can get um, strings and strip and modules and floodlights and panels. And, and there's a variety of them around the room today. Um, you know, Alex got some panels going on the floor over there and and there's some various other types of lights on the prize table that we can have a look at later. But pretty much lights, lights are more or less the first thing that I would start with. You know, look at your house, where do you want to put lights, what type of lights, do you want to build them into props or do you just want to follow the architectural features of your house or... Or you can just look at people's videos and see how have they done their house. So, but that'd probably be a good time to get out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Stop, you, you should stop here. Before you buy anything, walk away. <laughs> Otherwise, just, just throw your credit card over in the dumpster over there <laughs> and empty your wallet onto the table because that's what's going to happen. So there's, even within these types of lights, there's lots of different um, uh, subtypes. So... Throughout the presentation, you'll see occasionally I put some red boxes in around a point on one of these slides. And the point of the red box is to say, this is what most people use. Because like there, there are millions of options across all this stuff. Um, and you can either do all the research to find out, you know, for instance, on the right-hand side, why do you want resin-filled um, square nodes with the wires coming out the back rather than silicon-covered square nodes with the wires coming out the side? And the answer is, with the, with the um, silicon-covered ones of the wires coming out the side, people have had problems with water ingress. So, therefore, almost everyone just stays away from them. And when I say everyone, I'm talking in an Australian context of people that I know. What I'm trying to do is um, just point out what you should consider as your first option. You don't have to use that option, but it's a good place to start. The same with the strip types. You know, you can get strips with no coating or silicon tubes or resin filled strips or solid silicone or combinations of all of those things. Um, most people in this room, if they have strip on their house, I would say most people, unless they've got really old strip, have got it in silicone tube. Once you've got your lights, you've got to power them somehow. So you're going to need some power supplies. Um, most of the power supplies that people use in this hobby look similar to the things on the screen um, and they tend to have, you know, 240 volt screw terminals that you've got to find your friendly electrician if you want to do it legally to connect up a, a cable so you can even plug it into a power point. This side of things can be a little bit daunting for, for, um, for beginners. Certainly I was very afraid of having exposed 240 volt terminals lying around. You should always be very careful with 240 volt, even if your electrician has connected it up for you. So once you've got your lights, and once you've got power to your lights, you're going to need something to control your lights. And I'm talking about um, pixels primarily in this presentation, because that's what people starting out would use at this point. 
and so therefore you would need a pixel controller. Um, and on the screen we've got some pixel controllers featured from um, Avatec, who are an Australian supplier in Melbourne, and from um, Falcon Christmas or Pixel Controller. These are the two sort of most popular manufacturers used in Australia at this point in time. So then how do you, how do you hook your Pixel Controller up to, um, to your computer or whatever you're going to send the data from? These days, in, if you look at the 101 manual, there's a whole range of communication interfaces that it will talk about. It will talk about DMX and it will talk about other things that perhaps aren't very relevant to what we're doing these days or what new people coming in would do. These days you would just use the network port on your computer or your laptop as your communications interface and you would just plug from there either straight into your pixel controller or through some sort of switch. So you don't actually usually need to buy and go and buy a communications interface these days. So we've got the chain from the lights through to the controller through to your computer. What do you need after that? You need some sort of playback device. You can either use your actual computer if you want to tie up you know, your desktop or your laptop during your show each night. Or you can use um, yeah, a little single board computer. You know, it's about the size of this for those that haven't seen one. It's you know, probably $40 or $50, maybe $60 in Australia to buy one. And the point of that is it doesn't tie up your main computer while your show is running. Um, so you, if you go for the single board computer option, you would run something like Falcon Pi Player. Or if you want to run it, run your show off your computer, you'd go with something like X Schedule, which is a part of X Lights. And then, so you've, got, so you've got a way to get your show playback all the way from the computer all the way to your lights. But how do you create the effects and the sequences that you, you, know, you want to flash up with your music or whatever you want to do. You need some sequencing software to, to create these, these files for playback. Um, and I dare say everyone in this room, except one, is probably using x lights. Two? Okay. Three? How many people are using Vixen? Ooh. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with Vixen. It just doesn't have a huge following in Australia. Um, so I think most people in the room would probably recommend X Lights purely from a perspective of you can get help from others. And I think that has what that's what's driven X Lights growth, I guess, is um, it's, it's so easy to get help for these days. So if you want to download the 101. <laughs> Conveniently, the URL for the 101 is not in the 101. So, <laughs> well, you cue Ryan cringing, there's the URL, acl.website forward slash 101. And you do have to sign up to ACL to be able to download the um, 101. And of course, ACL is Oz Christmas Lighting, not the Australian Christmas Lobby. <laughs>